morning, First Love family. Here we are again. I love this. It is so good to be with you this morning. I'm hoping you're waking up to a glorious day in your heart, that your heart is filled with the joy of the Lord. And if it's not, guess what? You can stop and start over. Say, hey, Lord, I need your joy. I need to be filled with hope. And guess what will happen? He'll do that for you. Why? Because he's faithful. And it tells us right here in Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 23, it goes like this. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. You know what this says to me? It says that it's up to me whether I hold fast the confession of hope. It's, holding me, it, it, it's up to me whether or not I, I, I'm able to keep that hope going. And how do I do that? Well, I do that by the Holy Spirit giving it to me. And how do I get Him to give it to me? Well, I ask Him for it. I say, uh, Holy Spirit, I need you to increase this hope in me. I need you to help me to hold fast the confession, the confession of my hope without wavering. Uh, to take the wavering away from me, Lord. I got doubts about stuff, and I, I know I'm not. I, I know they, they have no place in my life today. Get rid of them for me, Lord. And then put on a little worship mu music and walk around in, the, in your yard, or, or, or just sh shoot your requests up to the Lord, and just acknowledge the fact that He is for you. Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I? Why am I worried? I have a mighty God. And, you know, I told my friend Steve Rex, the pastor of my old church on Kauai, you know, he always say, don't tell the Lord how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big the Lord is. And isn't that so true, man? It's like when I, when I hold on to a perspective of the size and the awesome nature and the power of God, and that he's for me and not against me, and that no weapon formed against me will prosper. When I keep that fresh on my mind and not worry about what's going on in my life, then I get his power. He pours out his power. Oh my gosh, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. There's no unfaithfulness in him. He is the, the definition of faithfulness. You look, up, you look up faithfulness in the dictionary, and there's Jesus' picture right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. For he who promised is faithful. And let us, here we go. This is, what, this is the point I wanted to make here. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. Thinking about missing church Wednesday night because you worked all day and you're tired, well, I gotta tell you this, I, I've never been so tired that when I got to church, I didn't leave refreshed, ever, not once. Oh, I drag my butt into the parking lot and I'm tired and I, I just want to go home and go to bed. First worship song that plays. I'm wide awake and focused. And I'm excited to be there. And I leave and maybe we go grab a bite to eat or something. And it's like I, I'm a chatterbox. And, because he revives me. And he'll revive you. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. You know, it's the same with meetings. I'll be like, ah, oh, I don't want to go to that meeting tonight, or maybe I'm bummed out about something, and I, uh, I go, and I get refreshed, renewed. The, the pursuit of spiritual matters as a Christian is the source of energy, strength, and power. Uh, going home and putting, uh, just, uh, and I did this because I was dealing with sickness and all that, and I, I spent way too much time in bed when I should have uh, been up doing something. Should have been sitting out in my backyard with my Bible. Should have been, you know, pursuing God. But I fell into a little pity party for a while. And I, yeah, I was legitimately ill, but man, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is in the manner of some. But here's the thing, and it's about getting out of self. It says, but exhorting one another. Like I'm not, I'm not looking to, I'm not looking always just for myself. 
I, I got, you know, I, I spent a lot of time calling up people I haven't seen for a couple of weeks. I'm like, hey, man, you coming to church tonight? In fact, this just happened last night. Somebody that I hadn't seen on Sunday, and I know they're going through some tough times, and I, and I asked them, I said, hey, are you coming to Bible study tonight? And he, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, man, be there. Just be there. Let me see your face. And after Bible study, he was like, dude, I needed that so bad. Because, you know, we, the devil will take us into falling into these places of complacency and, 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 and I don't need to go to church, I'm too tired, rah, 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 rah. Don't listen. Every time the doors open, the Christians should be with the body of Christ. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. Every time the doors open to the church, we should be here to greet, to minister. What if, what if God has has planned for you as a person to talk to somebody that he has picked out as a person that needs you because you're the only one that can help that person because you guys are alike and you don't come and that person leaves disappointed trust me this is the real deal this this happens not making an appointment that God set for you what you got to wait for a call from God that he set this appointment from you no just be here when the doors open to the church and allow the appointment to unfold the way God planned it, right? Am I lying? If I'm lying, I'm dying. Anyway, exhorting one another and so much more. Think about this now, as you see the day approaching. Can we see the day approaching? Look around the world. Look at the news. Well, don't look at the news. But the day is approaching. We're short, like we used to say. I'm short, man. We're short. There's not much time left. We're going to hear that, that trumpet. We're going to hear the voice of the archangel. Could be any minute. So don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. I mean begging one another. I mean it's exhorting one another like, bro, get your butt to church. Exhorting one another and so much more. Like, pour on the horsepower as you'd see the day approaching. Love you guys with all my heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good. Why would we ever want to stay away? Help my brothers and sisters, Lord God, to be motivated to be here every time the doors open. To bring somebody to celebrate our salvation together. Let us fellowship together and food, fellowship together in song, fellowship together in prayer, fellowship together in every way, Lord, because we're family. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.